Hello, my friend. Welcome to live chat. This is going to be a fun one, my friends, because um, I am taking inspiration from a creator that I very much admire, Robert Welch, who is who I learned the story from. I would not know the story without Robert doing the video. So what I have done is I have captured about eight minutes of his 20 minute video and I've left his big reveal thing that he says at the end that he adds on an extra piece that's in the, that's in his video. I'm going to let you watch his video. It's in full link down below, but I want to comment on just this whole situation in general with Charlotte Tilbury and this possibly very odd marketing campaign, possibly an accident that they tried to cover up. It's just, there's something, I don't know this. I'll, I'll get into kind of my thoughts on, on this kind of I, I have a lot of thoughts and I'm, I don't know. I, I just have a lot of thoughts and I don't want to like spoil everything in the intro and tell you like my end thoughts right now. <laughs> because it's like, why would you want to just rest the chat? You know what I'm saying? Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I just have so many thoughts and I want to share with you. This is the thing is I want to share with you what happened with Charlotte Tilbury and the case of the missing lipsticks. I'm going to share it with you because I'm curious to know what you think about it. And this is perfect for live chat because we have a collection, a collection, a group of lovely people that have joined us this morning. And you should be seeing them over here. If you are on your phone, flip it sideways. You should see the live chat. Um, they're going to help us kind of decipher this and, and weigh in their opinions on what they think happened with Charlotte Tilbury and this goofy, goofy ad campaign. I just... I don't know. I, I don't know. I do have theories though. But before we get into exactly what happened and Robert's video, I want to say hello very quickly to the people that are here live in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness, where we help each other to sort things out like this. And and the one thing I love about the community is that they help me to kind of think about things in new ways. So by the end of this, I may think something different than I started off. So we'll just have to see. Uh, so good morning, very quickly, to Leather Cupcake in Vegas. Hope you had a good Super Bowl weekend. I do not envy the commute, the, the traveling around Las Vegas during that time. Hopefully things have calmed down a little bit. Good morning to you, Cynthia. Very good to see you. Good morning, Roya. Good to see you as well. Good morning, Shell. Good morning to Teresa and the rest of the moderator, moderators. I saw Flory is here as well. Thank you so much for giving us such a wonderful, safe place to, to chat. Uh, Christine, good morning to you. Good morning to Jilly Mack. Happy to see you. Teresa says, don't forget to like and share. It really does help Jen. It really does, genuinely. It only takes just a quick little click and it's free. It just boop. And it helps tell YouTube that people like the video. So it'll just suggest it to more people and give them the option of clicking if they choose to. Hi, Latina. Hello, my besties. Raining here and cold. Hope all are well, Latina and Julio down by the schoolyard. Yes, thank you. Thank you for being here, Latina. Tell Julio I said hello. Hi, Kim. Uh, Kim, also in Vegas. We're finally going to in, get into the upper 60s, low 70s this week. Ooh, that sounds very nice. Where you know, I'm starting to feel that spring might be coming. Like I'm, you know, that smell of spring. I smelled that the other day, just a little bit. I know it's not time yet, but feel like it's coming. I do. I feel like it's coming eventually. Hi, Tiffany. Well, of course it will eventually. <laughs> Hi, Tiffany. Very good to see you. Hi, Lana. Hi, Carrie and Angie and Tish. Good morning. Consuelo, good morning to you. Jen and company and Ginger and Tracy and my girl, Flory and French Fry and Alma and Elizabeth in snow covered Indy. Uh, Dolphins Girl and Mary, good morning to you. And if I did not say good morning to you, good morning to you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, it looks like Confessions of a Stay at Home Mom has become a member of the Collective Brain Elite. I appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you. Um, collective Brain Elite is kind of in lieu of doing like super chats and stuff. Super chats make me super uncomfortable. <laughs> so I don't do them. <laughs> so we do the, the Collective Brain Elite instead. And, you know, it makes, makes things a little more 
make my my brain be able to handle things better. So that's a different story that we will address another day. But what we're going to talk about today is this video that Robert put out, which I think was really good. We're not going to react to the whole thing, um, but I but he really covers it very well. He did a lot of great research on it. And as you know, I've been very consumed with research for the Lisa Frank video that I put out this week. Uh, that almost killed me. I spent literally like 14 hours straight editing that video. Um, it was a lot. It was totally worth it. It wasn't painful work other than the actual amount of hours. I really did enjoy putting it together, uh, but it was, it took, it was extremely time consuming, um, even though it was a labor of love. Um, you know how that goes. So I, I didn't have time to research the Charlotte Tilbury uh, situation on my own. So we are taking Robert's research. Uh, please watch his entire video. <laughs> it's down below. Uh, he's not hurting for views, though. He has about 200,000 views on the video. He's not hurting for him, but he does do a more comprehensive job on the story than I'm going to do today. So, uh, all right. Oh, thank you so much, Leah says. I think it's my favorite video on YouTube now. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so glad you all enjoyed it. I really enjoyed putting it together. Um, the thing about that video was that I really thought that I knew, I genuinely thought I knew that whole story. Um, because I watched it all go down. We reported on it on WhatsApp and makeup. Um, you know, I thought I knew all the things and then I just kept uncovering more and more and more and more and more things. <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh. So, um, so yeah, I really, uh, I really put a lot of love into it, but that stopped me from, from researching the Charlotte Tilbury situation. So we're going to bite off of Robert right now. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put his video on the screen. There he is in his lovely face. And like I said, I just clipped about eight minutes out of his video so we can talk about it. Here's the setup. Packages for their new lipsticks. The new okay, hold on, hold on. Did I get to the beginning? Let me make sure I'm at the beginning. So Charlotte Tilbury, the brand, recently sent out PR packages for their new lipsticks. The new Hollywood icon lipsticks. I can't remember if the liners are new, but the PR package had a lipstick and a liner to go with it. So the Hollywood icon lipsticks are different lipsticks with different finishes, kind of in like a time period-esque vibe it kind of gives. Almost like iconic lip shades at, at different times. Honestly, it gives like Besame vibes. You know, Besame, they make um, historically accurate lipstick lipsticks so anyway the influencers get their pr big big packages shaped like i think it's shaped meant to be like a lipstick but to me it looks more like a nail polish like an opi nail polish they're huge kind of like advent calendar-esque like for christmas okay so i just want to just comment very quickly on this giant pr box okay this is not abnormal to have a big pr box but that size is abnormal to have a PR box that's that big, but it is not abnormal to get a box this big with three products in it that could fit into a pouch like this. It is, um, the reason why I think brands do this is because it makes it uh, stand out because a lot of influencers, I was watching, I think it was Morgan Turner on TikTok last night, I was trying to find, um, you know, just things that were happening in the industry in case this didn't take up the whole chat. And, um, Morgan Turner was showing all of her PR and all of the products that she's gotten um, and the stacks and stacks of all this stuff. The thing is, is it's really hard when you send out PR, you want the people you're sending it to, to do something with it, right? So in order to stand out, a lot of brands will sell, will send creative packaging. Like for example, I'll show you the one, I think I showed this in live chat last week, maybe. This was the benefit um, packaging that they sent that um, was for their new, uh, the new brow products. So they sent this in the, if you, I think we, we talked about this, we did, um, where they're, they're holding the brow pencils as their little drumsticks. And then inside here, you open this up and there is uh, the little slots for this. Could this have been put in a bubble mailer? Absolutely. So much cheaper for the brand, so much better for the environment uh, than to, to make this custom packaging. I, mean, I can't even imagine how much each one of these custom units costs for them to make. But the thing is, is the reason why they do this is because they want to grab the influencer's attention because if they just send it in a bubble mailer, it's going to get thrown in the back. They're never going to see it and it's going to be a waste. So when they invest in something like this, it's more likely to be mentioned. I've already mentioned this twice because of this packaging. So that's, that's the logic behind it. And yes, environmentally, it's wasteful. Um, but 
monetarily for the brand, it's not wasteful because it it brings them more attention from the people they send it to. So this is why they create uh, these big, huge packages. I've never gotten anything like that. The most involved packaging that I, let me go back to me because I'm, I'm talking, let me go back here. Um, I will go back to Robert in a second. The most involved packaging I ever got was when CoverGirl rebranded. They sent out a it was like a, a case like this that was full of products. It might have even been bigger. Like it was huge. And you opened up the top and there was a video screen in there. Um, it wasn't like an iPad or anything, but it was like a video screen that just played one video about the rebranding of CoverGirl. And inside it was trays and trays and trays and trays of all of the new products. Um, and there was no way to, to, um, to miss that. If you were getting a bunch of PR, there's no way to miss that. Uh, and they did actually ask me, I remember CoverGirl contacted me and they said, Hey, we have this big PR package. Do you want it? And I said, yeah, absolutely. I created content with it, all of that. So, um, for me personally, I feel like, um, one thing that brands could do to minimize this waste is to, reach out to influencers ahead of time and do like have somebody on staff that it's their job to communicate with influencers and say, Hey, do you want this? You know, and, and have people opt in for these big, huge PR packages. And then that way they're not wasting their money, sending things out to people who will never open it. Um, but that takes time and it takes a staff member to do that. So they just kind of have to decide. But I feel like when I, like when I watch Morgan Turner's video, it's like how much waste there was and how many people would love to have those products that are just sitting in piles and are such a mess for her. You know, she's, she's got to deal with all of this now. She's got to no, do something with this. And it, those products would be so loved in another place. It's just, it's the, such, the system is not good <laughs> when it comes down to, the system is just not good in general. I want to see what you all are saying about this. Um, okay. So Monica says, okay, this was all baloney. The size was ridiculous. Okay. So you're spoiling it. Don't spoil it yet, Monica. <laughs> I might have already spoiled it too. So I forget whether I said the thing. All right. So hold on a second. Let me see if there's anybody talking about what I'm talking about right now. I don't want to like get into the next piece. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. So Julie says, I think there's a way to make something that has a second use that still stands out that isn't so incredibly wasteful. Yeah. So like, for example, let me show you this. Oh, I got right here. Okay. So Kaleidos. Let me show you these. So these, I believe, are available to purchase from Kaleidos, these, these beauty chests. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, and this is the way that they send the PR collections, and they're gorgeous. And I feel like this is something that can be reused. I actually have a couple of um, things like this that I've reused and repurposed because, I mean, this is something to keep. This is not something to throw away. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, but the, the big PR packages like this, like, what am I going to do with this? The only thing to do with this is throw it away after I've told you. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yes, there are some things you can do like second use, but even that, like how many of those kinds of cases, like of a, of a little chest, are we going, or do you need in your life? Three, four, you know, but then, you know, every collection you get a new one, it's like, you know, maybe pass it on to somebody. I know I passed on one of those to somebody and they were very, very thankful. It was a different one that looked very similar to that. Um, but yeah, so Uh, let's see. Okay. Lindsay says, I don't agree from it with it from the waste standpoint, but if they're using influencers to market, they need to send them props. It is more waste than traditional marketing. Probably. Yeah, definitely. Um, and yeah, I think it's the prop thing. Like, okay. So I have another thing. It's, uh, I don't know. Do you want to see it? I don't know. I'll get it. Get it just in case all these things. I believe this was from cover girl that they sent these out, these crowns. I feel like I should wear this for the rest of the video. That actually looks really good on me. I was meant to be a queen <laughs> with this like cheap, it's not real metal. It's not real metal, but you know, it's very, it is very heavy though. I will say it doesn't feel like, it's not like, like bendy, but, but yeah, I mean, I think it's the props too. It's the props. I think that that's, that's, and I think, and it gets the viewer's attention too, when you see something different. This, this is actually really cute on me. I like that. Um, 
here we go. Okay, Roya says, in my opinion, they should pay the influencer to advertise their products instead of outrageous containers like that will go into the trash. Yeah, and I think the problem is, is in order to get, like we're gonna show Michaela in a bit, in order to get Michaela to sponsor a video for Michaela, you're looking at thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I don't know what number of thousands, but lots of thousands of dollars to get Michaela to sponsor a video. But a PR package is much cheaper to get into her hands. Um, she's not obligated to, to do anything with it, but it's a lot cheaper on that end. So I think that's why Roya, they do that. Um, what what, what a lot of brands are doing now is they're reaching out to smaller influencers, influencers that have, you know, 20,000 followers, which is still a, a lot of followers. Um, they're a lot cheaper. And they also have tend to have very dedicated audiences. You know, people that have under 100,000 subscribers tend to have extremely dedicated audiences that watch a lot of their content. Um, if you can find those superstar, smaller, relatively smaller, not really, they're not really small, but relatively smaller influencers, you can get a big bang for your buck on uh, sponsorship for those kinds of channels. So that's why you might be seeing some of your favorite smaller people getting more sponsorships because it's just a better deal and their engagement is so good uh, for their size and for the money that the companies have to pay. All right, so let's go ahead and let's... Um, yeah, and this too, this is a really good point. Stacy says, yeah, but if they pay the influencer, people aren't as likely to believe it. That's true. That's true. Okay, so let's go back to Robert. And I think I'm going to keep this on because I do think it looks really cute. It might start giving me a headache though because it is a little heavy. So <laughs> so we'll see. It might, it might last the whole video. It might not. All right, let's go back to Robert. This Advent calendar situation, you know, with like the slots that you have to tear open, they're already a little bit, is it called perforated? But you kind of have to cut them like, Peel them open. Oh my god. <laughs> it is massive. <laughs> no truth, guys. I'm gonna close my eyes. Oh! I was the lucky one to actually receive a PR parcel with the products in it. So, all of the swatches of the lipstick, and I'm gonna try this one. And they also have new red lipsticks, and I really wanna try this one. This is lip liner shade Super Sick. Let me just say, she's freaking adorable. I don't know who she is, but I love her already me and oh my god it is so pretty and this is shade candy chic this is like my dream lipstick color it is so pretty did you see the way that just like shined in the light to like the, the shock and surprise okay so i cut his video there there was that clip was a lot longer in robert's video of some of the influencers the slots where the lipstick should be were empty i'm supposed to be really excited look at this huge pr like it looks insane and it's from charlotte tilbury however i already watched some review like people said that there's apparently no lipsticks in here and that's the most important part of this launch so you know i'm gonna be so disappointed if there's actually no lipstick because like all these packaging are you kidding me let's investigate who stole the lipstick um, let's choose a random one okay just remember she just said who stole the lipsticks put that in your back pocket for later let's see i, I want to choose the pink one because i've tried the formula and they're actually really bomb i did a photo shoot with charlotte tilbury and these lipsticks are <gasps> there's indeed nothing are you kidding hold on hold on we're gonna open everything else. Is this, is, this is, is this like actual PR move or like, they forgot. I feel like- What is inside of this? Holy fuck. This is like the most beautiful shit I've ever seen. I don't even, I don't even want to touch this. Holy crap. Wait, this just took a turn of events. Mine is empty. Mine is empty. Is this a mistake? I don't know what's happening. Like, there's all these pockets for new lipsticks, and they're all empty, the whole thing. What is going on? <laughs> That's sad. I was literally so excited to try the new lipsticks. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> At least I got the lip liners, and there's also one of my favorite set and sprays in here. But no lipsticks. I'm like so sad right now. <laughs> I'm definitely keeping this in my beauty room and putting it on display. But yeah, I'm kind of like sad. I don't know why it's empty. The lipsticks weren't in the PR packages at all. The lip liners were, the lipsticks weren't. Because some people received the packages full with all the lipsticks and some people didn't. And now the PR team are fumbling to be like, oh shit, we've sent empty packages to some massive influencers. How do we 
how do we fix this, you know? With some Oscar-worthy performances, here's how they've chosen to maybe cover it up or maybe it was their plan. To our Okay, so before we get into this, do you think at this point that the influencers knew why they were empty? Do you think they're acting or do you think that the influencers genuinely didn't know that the lipsticks were going to be gone in there? Okay, so we have Anna says it was all staged for clout. Maurice says PR stunt. Kristen says, I feel like if her mouth is moving, there's a good chance she's lying. It's so sad. It's so sad when it's like that. All right, I'm skipping the ones that have spoilers. <laughs> uh, Sin says it flopped. It just flopped, LMAO. Yeah, Carrie says so sad while smiling. All most influencers knew. See, I the thing. This is the thing about smiling when you're sad. I do that all the time. Like I'll be upset and I'll be smiling. It's really weird. My son does the same thing, and it's the most aggravating thing because he'll be in trouble and he'll be smiling. And I had to train myself to realize that that is his uncomfortable face. He is smiling when he's uncomfortable. So maybe I mean I don't always take a smile when somebody's upset as being because I because I do it. <laughs> I think it might be the ADHD in my son and me. Um, so I don't, I don't know. It, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So sad. Well, smile. yeah, see, but see if I had gotten that, I feel like I would have been like, I am so sad. Like, like what, what happened? But, but the thing is, I don't know if I would, I would have been like, what? I don't know if I would have felt like sad. If, I don't know. Maybe I would have felt sad. I don't know. I'm trying to put myself in that position. <laughs> Monica says, LOL, Oscar worthy. Yes. Paul says, acting. Tiffany says, they knew. Sandra says, I'm always looking for, I'm always cooking when the live comes on. I literally jumped and almost spit, split, spilt hot cheese sauce when Michaela spoke. She, she's so crass. Her voice is very strong. It definitely can be a little bit jarring. And I think that's one of the reasons why people were attracted to her is because her, her voice is so jarring and it doesn't seem to match um, when she's all done up and looking absolutely gorgeous. Um, okay, so, oh, we have a different one. Sarah says, I don't think the influencers knew. Teresa thinks that it's acting. Leah says, it doesn't matter. It's already dumb. You know what? Oh, Leah, Leah, I think I said Lisa. Leah, I, I am kind of on with you <laughs> at this point. I'm kind of on with you. Like, it's, it's yeah. Elizabeth says they knew their reactions were off. Um, yeah, so a lot of you are thinking they're acting. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, let's go ahead and watch it continue. So then it continues. So the question is, this is the question right now, is did they send the PR boxes out without the lipsticks by accident and then have to backtrack and cover it up by making it a marketing campaign? Or did they purposely leave the lipsticks out in order to create a marketing campaign behind it. That's the big question. Were the lipsticks left out by accident and then they had to cover it up or on purpose and it was all just meant to be from the beginning? I have my opinions of what I think. And I want to give you this little bit of a background. So Robert says this too. I've gotten PR packages where there was no product, where it was just literally an empty box. Um, I've gotten PR packages with, one time I got a PR package and it literally had somebody's lunch uh, utensils in it. Like, you know, the utensils you get from like a takeout spot where it has like a napkin and a salt and pepper and a spork in it. I literally got an opened uh, lunch utensils in my box. Uh, so weird things do happen sometimes with PR where you won't get all the things you're supposed to get. There's empty spaces because what they would do for this kind of box is they would have the um, the tray and somebody would fill everything up and then they would slide it in to the packaging and then there would be like a like a seal thing, almost like when you get like a like a USPS box, how you have like the little strip and then you seal it. That's That's most likely the way it would be or it would be like a fold kind of thing, a folding situation that would hold that case inside that they would pre-fill. So I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, how likely is it that someone took that entire giant tray, two of them, and put them into the packaging, not realizing that the lipsticks weren't there? Because remember, they're not opening each door, right? The doors are all sealed. They're putting the tray in of with the lipsticks and the lip liners into the thing. 
and they're looking at it. I mean, this, this I'm assuming is done by a human. I don't think this is done by a machine. I think this is done by people. So how likely is it that they didn't notice that the lipsticks were not in the trays? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. All right. Let's watch the next piece that Robert talks about, which was Charlotte Tilbury's response to people finding that their lipsticks were, were not there. Our beloved Charlotte Tilbury community, we are deep. Okay, I forgot. I wanted to read that to you in case you're listening. So it says, hold on. To our beloved Charlotte Tilbury community. Okay, it says case file number 13. The Hollywood lipstick heist, missing beauty icon lipsticks, evidence subjects, the inner circle. We are deeply saddened and shocked. Demetria, president, the curious CEO. To have discovered the disappearance of our Hollywood beauty icon lipstick collection. We invite anyone with any information to comment below at hashtag I am the lipstick finder. Thank you so much for your support in this. I am the lipstick finder. Like, did she just come up with that in that second? Because it sounds like she came up with that in that second. Hashtag I am the lipstick finder. It just sounds like, okay, because I, I used to be an elementary school teacher and the kids would play pretend. And this sounds like something that the kids would come up with in their recess game. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't sound markety. It doesn't sound smart. It doesn't sound, you know what I mean? Like, it sound, it, it doesn't, <laughs> it's very odd. It's very odd. It's a difficult time. But it gets odder. Wait, has anyone spoken to Bella and Sophia? I can't believe you think I'm a suspect. I would never steal Charlotte's DNA. So that said, this is Sophia, Sophia Tilbury, the suspicious sister. And it goes on and on. I didn't put all of them in here. There's like seven or eight people in here. All of them saying that they didn't steal Charlotte's DNA, that they didn't steal the lipsticks, that they didn't. Like, why are we talking about Charlotte's DNA? What does that even mean? Like, I don't even understand what this means at this point. It's very odd. Steal Charlotte's DNA. She's putting all the Charlotte Tilbury Crazy products in her bag. And there's a dog. And now this one, it says case file 13, the Hollywood lipstick heist, missing beauty icon lip lipsticks, evidence subjects, Covenant Garden Darling. So this must be in a store. The Hollywood beauty icon lipsticks. That's all anyone's talking about. Sorry, I can't help you with that. I didn't see anything suspicious. Our delivery driver was on time as usual. We did have a couple of absences on Saturday, but that's quite normal. Who's okay, I don't know why it froze there. Okay, you know what this is reminding me of now? Did you ever play, there was a Sega Genesis game back in the day that was like a mystery game. The acting totally reminds me of that. I remember playing at my best friend's basement, and which because she had a Sega Genesis and I didn't. I only had a Nintendo, but it was like a mystery game that you had to solve the mystery. Like the acting feels like a video game to me. Like totally, like a, like a, a 90s Sega Genesis or like an early 2000s video game. I told you I was absent. I was off sick, I promise. It wasn't me. She was a little better. It says, it's a napkin. There's a lipstick mark and it says, want your lipsticks back? Meet me at... Tilbury HQ, 2nd February at dusk, bring no one XXX and another lipstick mark on the napkin. It's like, what? There's no lipstick in here as they pretend to open the flaps and you can see the other ones are completely open already. So I just got this PR set to me. Okay, so, so anyway, let me go back to this. So, okay, this is the thing about this and a lot of you are saying it, it's, it feels like an extremely cheap copy of the e.l.f. Cosmic cosmetic criminals ad. They elf put so much money and time into this elf cosmetic criminals ad. And this, and the thing is, is Charlotte Tilbury is a more elevated brand. It's a more expensive brand than elf. So it cheapens Charlotte Tilbury in that it looks like a copy of a drugstore, very inexpensive brand who did it so much better, like the whole cosmetic criminal, someone stole my makeup situation. It's just odd. It's just odd and it comes off as 
really fake, really fake, and that no thought was put into it. It was just kind of thrown together. And that's why I was thinking maybe, just maybe, this was a backtrack for accidentally leaving the lipsticks out because it does seem really poorly put together. You know what I'm saying? So Carly says, they did they copy Elf? I think that it seems like they did. Absolutely. Julie says, I think this was just a flat swing and a miss. Cringe as hell. PR marketing scheme. Teresa says, this is too much. Uh, Tiffany says, Elf for the win. Enid says, the Elf ad was actually good. I really enjoyed it. I know some people didn't, but I really loved it. Uh, Lauren says, it's giving intern project that didn't get fully script approved. Yes, it is. I agree with you. I worked at Ulta and have a degree in marketing. The the Elf cause, uh, cause cr cosmetic criminals wasn't my jam either. Gotcha. Renee says, unpopular opinion. I think we are taking this too seriously. Okay, so Renee, I'm not taking it seriously. I hope I'm not giving the impression that I'm taking it seriously because I'm definitely not. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm wearing a freaking crown. So I, I'm really hoping nobody thinks I'm taking this seriously because I'm definitely not. I'm just It's just commentary. So please don't think I'm taking it. Renee's been around for freaking ever. Renee's been, what, since probably 2015? 15 at least Renee you've been a subscriber of mine so utmost uh, respect but I, I just want to let you know I'm not taking this seriously at all <laughs> maybe it's because you're reading something in the comments where people are like extra upset or something maybe maybe that's it all right so let's take a quick break I'm going to take this off because it is actually hurting my head because it's metal there's no padding on it at all um so I am going to take that off and let's just talk very quickly about what's on my face take a little bit of a break so um on my face today eyeshadow I grabbed this I'm let me see is there anything I think there's one thing that I purchased but everything else is PR I'll tell you when it's something I purchased so this is uh called sage bundle and is a gel eyeshadow by ColourPop. this is what's all over my lids today and I opened this up and it looks really weird I don't think that I use this much product um it's kind of deflated but that's okay it still worked really really well I'm gonna go ahead and swatch it for you it's a little bit harder too it's not um not as moussey as it once was because I think it's getting a little old but um but yeah but it applied really nicely to the lid just kind of show you the swatch it's if you're listening it's just kind of a little bit of a shifty like a almost like a white to champagne kind of color it shifts a little bit peach uh and it's really really pretty so i use that along with the one product that i purchased and that is the about face liquid shadow and this is in the shade i don't know uh it just says matte matte fluid eye paint what's the color on it though i don't know but it's the brown one <laughs> i can't read you know my optometrist told me that this was going to start happening that's what that's what happens my my optometrist told me this was going to start happening it's just kind of like a nudie brown um like a real cool tone nudie brown so i use that kind of to to just kind of anchor down the the shimmery shade just to give it a little bit of dimension in the crease. And I did use, uh, based on the uh, something that we're gonna talk about in the product report, I was talking about using cream shadows with a fluffy brush. And I was like, I've literally never done that because I didn't realize that was an option. Because in face products, you usually think about fluffy brushes being for powder products and more dense brushes being for cream products. So I never really used fluffy brushes with cream products, but in the advertising campaign for the Huda Beauty new eyeshadow, they use fluffy brushes. So I decided to try it with the about face and it worked really, really well. Um, so I'm actually going to use this more often now because I didn't really know how to use it without using a fluffy brush unless I was packing it onto my lid. So now that I know I can break that rule, I don't know, my, my brain is very linear in that way. <laughs> like I can't use a fluffy brush because it's a cream and you just can't do that. And I don't know. I don't watch a lot of tutorials, obviously. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, so this worked out very, very well. So this was purchased. On my cheeks today, PR from ColourPop, the shade Good Energy. This is, uh, I don't think this is available anymore, but it is extremely lightly pigmented. Uh, anybody that's in any way, like I had trouble building it on my skin tone. This I believe is meant for the very, very, very fair. And then for lips today, also PR from Sigma. This is the lip cream in New Mod. I read it. I was able to do it. My optometrist would be proud. New Mod is the name of the 
lipstick that I'm using and it's kind of like a medium pink um, and these are really really nice they're very comfortable uh, it's it's kind of a mix between a lipstick and a liquid lipstick it's a liquid form but it feels more like a lipstick it's not uncomfortable or dry in any way it's a really really nice formula all right so okay we're gonna get Jamie I just read your comment we're gonna get to it we're gonna get to it um all right so Okay, <laughs> Michelle says, as an optometrist, I warn people if this is starting in the early 30s, uh, of this starting in the early 30s, so don't panic. You wouldn't believe the number of 40 year olds who come into my clinic think they're going blind. Yeah, that's me. I'm that person that goes to my optometrist and be like, I can't see anything anymore. <laughs> So, you know, because you don't know what's going to happen as you get older, you hear from other people what happens as you get older. It's kind of like when you're pregnant or, you know, when you're going through something, anything that's physical and you look at what other people have said have happened in the past and you're like, oh, is that going to happen to me? And then when it starts happening, you're like, oh my gosh, is this it? Is this what's happening? So thank you, Michelle, for that. Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, Yuri says, you see Yuri smart. Yuri says, I would assume dense brush for coverage, fluffy for brush for tint. So it makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, so let's get back into this. Oh, Sorogen says, uh, I got the best shade ever in the uh, AF foundation, but it does get greasy on me throughout the day. AF foundation, about face foundation. Nice, um, but it gr gets greasy. Oh, I'm sorry, it gets greasy on you throughout the day. That stinks. I haven't purchased that yet. Oh, oh, wow. Allison says multi multifocal contacts are life changing. See all the things that we learn, all the things we learn. All right. So here we go. Let's go ahead and go back to Robert real quick, because this is when he starts getting suspicious of one of the influencers. In the mail, and this is from Charlotte Tilbury for their new lipstick uh, lip liner duo. And y'all, this is beautiful. Look how big this is. Oh my god, it's like half my body. But I'm gonna open it for the first time with you guys because I want to see what's inside. Some brands really go all out with their packaging, and Charlotte Tilbury is definitely one of them because ah, look how beautiful this is. Okay. So Okay, so this is something Robert's going to point out in a second. She's like, I'm going to open this with you for the first time. But you can clearly see that some of those doors are already open. She opened those doors already. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I get, okay, I totally get, you know, wanting to reenact something. But it's like when you are in a beauty review kind of space, you can't lie. <laughs> you just can't. You can't lie. Because then people, the whole point of your job in the beauty review space as an expert beauty reviewer is that you have to be trustworthy. And if, look, you can clearly see the doors are open. And she said, I'm going to open this for the first time with you. Like, don't do that. It's not worth it. Instead, just go with the angle of honesty. Dude, I started to open this up off camera and I noticed something really, really odd. And it will come off the same way. You know what I'm saying? Like, you'll have the same point. The same thing will come out. But don't pretend. Don't lie about it. You know? So I see the lip liners are here. And there's pink and red lipsticks. So let's open the first one and try it out. We have the first pink. Wait, did I drop it? Did there's I drop it? There's lipstick in here. Wait, okay, wait. She's already opened them. Am I bugging out? There is no lipsticks in here. Wait, let's see. Wait, because now it looks stupid. But we have to think about would they? So, so what? Oh, sorry, Robert. Hold on. Have okay, that's a little bit better. So, uh, this is the thing. Okay, when 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 I was a teacher, when I was an elementary school teacher, I always reference this back. We used to do these kinds of things with the kids as a joke, you know, where you would you would lose use it as a teaching opportunity. So I may say, you know, where we had this little owl. I forget what his name was, but he was really cute. And it's like, where's I don't think his name was Hootie. Cause like Team Hootie and the Blowfish. Where's Hootie? Where's Hootie? And then you would like hide Hootie behind your back, and then you'd make him like poke out out of the side. And they'd be like, he's behind your back. He's behind your back. And it's like, where did he go? And of course, you're obviously holding it, right? But you would do these like goofy things with kids. That's what this reminds me of is like the little goofy kindergarten things we used to do when you obviously know that you're not telling the truth to kids, but you're, you're just being silly. And the kids know you're obviously holding the owl behind your back. 
So, you know, the kids know if they're with, you know, if they've gotten to that point in their brain development, they know that you're holding it. But you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what this reminds me of is she's like thinking that, that it feels like an elementary school skit is what I'm saying that a teacher, the teachers might try to pull off for fun, but it's just, it's so bad. It was so bad. Like, why, why are we doing this? Okay. Back to Robert. Oh, this Robert. There we go. Opened an empty PR box and then posted about it on TikTok. Or posted about it if they have a good relationship with the brand. Also, didn't Elf just do this? Didn't Elf just do like a whole crime scene situation? I began to notice little things. When I added it all up, it made me think, there's someone stealing my makeup. I mean, production quality, production. It was like a little movie. It was so well done. Like with a higher budget and with actual actors and mixed in with influencers. Finally have an update on the missing Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. Listen. Okay, so let's hold off on Michaela for a second. So, so yeah, I mean, clearly this was an attempt to, I, this is the thing is I don't think that it was smart to do a cheaper version of, an, of the Elf commercial. Like, I think that that was just very not thought out at all. Um, I want to be clear, though, kind of going back to what we were saying a second ago, is that I am not, I, I it's not like I'm going to boycott freaking Charlotte Tilbury over this. This is not, this is not that serious. But I do think, um, Renee, um, thank you, Renee. There's Renee. Hi, Renee. Um, I do think that, um, you know, it's important. I'm glad Renee brought it up to understand this is not like a boycottable thing. It's just kind of a discussion of like marketing techniques and what works and what doesn't work. And I, for me, this one just clearly does not work like at all. Yeah. Elf did it way better. Yeah. Way better. I accidentally clicked on Cynthia, but um, Cynthia is talking about her vision. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, I just, I, I just feel like, so, so now Robert is going to go into what um what he thinks happened based on what's going on with Michaela in this section. First of all, I was not in on this. I have no I I have no fucking idea what the hell is going on with this, okay? Like I received that package totally expecting for the lipsticks to be in there. They weren't. And I don't know if they did it on purpose. I have no clue. Or if they truly like messed up and they're just trying to cover their tracks with like this whole Charlotte Tilbury lipstick heist situation. I don't know. Anyways, I okay, but see the thing is, sorry, Michaela, hold on me. I hope it was. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, I just don't want. I don't like leaving it on like a not good. It's 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 a little bit better. So anyway. The, the problem with Michaela is that Michaela has outright lied to the camera so many times at this point that it's like, how do you even know whether she's even telling the truth or not? You know, like, it, does she really, does she really not know? Like, what's the point of even saying you didn't know when it's like, nobody knows whether you knew or not, no matter what you say, because she's lied so many times. You know, and if that's her branding, if that's her deal, if that's who she wants to present herself to be, that's totally fine. I mean, that's her choice. But it's like, I don't, I, I don't think that that makes a difference to me as a viewer than Michaela's saying that she didn't know. So then it gets a little, there's another twist and Michaela's about to show you. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, Catherine, not Michaela again. Um, sorry. I, I need to, I need to show it because it's important to the story. So I apologize for people that that aren't a fan and on purpose because like i don't know that just seems kind of wasteful anyways look what i just got in the mail evidence bags evidence okay how quickly could they have turned this over if if this was truly something they had to think of on the fly or or was this the plan from the beginning i you know what i just thought of I just thought of something just now that could be a possibility. It's a new theory. My new theory, which I have zero evidence is actually a real thing, is that maybe when they got the PR packages, the lipsticks weren't ready. They hadn't gotten the shipment of lipsticks yet, but they want, they knew when the launch date was. So let's say the, the lipsticks were, um, were supposed to launch on February 2nd, let's just say. They knew they needed to get the PR packages out, but they didn't physically have them yet. So they cooked up this scheme of this whole, 
you know, the lipsticks were stolen thing because they had the elf ad on their minds because brands watch each other and they're like, well, we'll do something similar and we'll say that the lipsticks were stolen, but it was because they just physically didn't have them, but they still wanted to send the PR out anyway. And they had invested in this huge packaging. So they're stuck in the situation with this big, huge, expensive packaging. And all they have is the lip liners. And I think it was a setting spray and they need to get them out to people so they can hype up this lipstick, but they don't have the lipsticks. So what are you going to do? So you send out the PR packages without the lipsticks and set up this whole cosmetic criminal situation. And then later on, when you do get the lipsticks, the PR lipsticks, then you send them out in the little evidence bags when you have them. That's a new theory that I have zero evidence is actually real, but it could be it. That could be it. I'd be curious to know if I was right. I would be very impressed with myself if I was, but I don't know. I have no idea. All right, let's go back. I don't know and when I tell you this has driven me insane for like the last week I'm not has it really driven her insane the last week though like I'm wondering I'm just wondering I'm just asking a question like is this something that's really been on her mind I have no idea I don't know but I'm wondering if that's a true statement kidding so this is the lipsticks in evidence bags it says nobody can steal shallow Tilbury's beauty DNA dialings evidence bag with the lipsticks in it this is crazy <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I finally have the goddamn lipsticks and I'm really happy about it. I was gonna buy them anyways because I thought I'd never see them. So, case closed. So, in the. <laughs> Let me click on this one. I just read this. Uh, Yuri says that's giving Charlotte Tilbury too much credit, Jen, with your theory. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Horribly cringy end result. It was actually Charlotte Tilbury that stole the lipstick. I'm Charlotte Tilbury. Why on earth would I steal my own lipsticks? I know nothing about a Hollywood heist. So it's another one of those things. It says case file number 13, the Hollywood lipstick heist, beauty eye missing beauty icon lipsticks, evidence subject, the makeup mastermind. Is that what that says? Makeup mastermind. Come to think of it, I'm the one that should be reporting a beauty crime. Don't tell people I'm a beauty So, you caught me picking red handed. Of course, it was me who stole the lipsticks. Nobody else can steal my beauty DNA. They can try, but they cannot deny. Darling, let me tell you a beauty secret. If you want the real thing, the original, and the best, it's Charlotte Tilby Beauty every time. But is it the original? And is like. <laughs> It's just such a weird thing to say. I was the officer. I just had to keep them. It's just too iconic. So that was all I captured from Robert's video. Um, I do want to definitely encourage you to watch the whole thing. His video is about 20 minutes long. I only showed you about eight minutes and he really, you know, you get to see the full clips. You get to see his final theory at the end, um, which is something I purposely left out. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I, when I started this this conversation with you all, my theory was that they mistakenly, like when I was getting ready to film um, to come on for live chat, is that they uh, mistakenly left out the lipsticks. But now I don't think that because I kind of talked myself out of it in that they would have had to physically put those trays inside. Let me just go back and um, show you the, the packaging again. Go to one of the clips where it shows the packaging. So inside here, it's like an advent calendar. If you've ever gotten a, like a chocolate advent calendar, that there's a tray inside with where all the little chocolates sit. So that's what's happening in this thing is that they have the little foam things and you fill it first and then you drop it into the top or the bottom or whatever. So someone put that in there physically. They had to have seen that none of them had the lipsticks in it. There's no way that the person packing them knew didn't know that lipsticks were not there. So now the question is, why did they leave the lipsticks out? Was it because they planned this whole copy off of Elf lipstick heist thing? Or was it because they were put in an uncomfortable situation and they had to figure out how to get out of it? That's what I would wonder. I don't know if we'll ever know. I honestly don't know if we'll ever know. 
Jenna says, LOL, it would still be original and the best and whatnot if someone else stole it. Or if it wasn't stolen, she really makes no sense. I agree with you, Jen Jenna. This it doesn't make any sense. So, um, the Dalji, I'm going to say Dalji. Hopefully I did okay. Um, I've never tried Charlotte Tilbury. How are their products? I've been interested in the Glowgasm and the Pillow Talk. I actually really like her lipsticks. I think they're very creamy. Are they head and shoulders better than my Milani lipsticks? Absolutely not. I think that they're very good. Um, I do very much enjoy the two or three that I have. I don't have very many, uh, but I I do like them. I've I've purchased every one, uh, mostly through the Beautylish Lucky Bags. I've gotten them, um, and they're creamy. They feel really good on the lips, but it's a lipstick. In the end, it's a lipstick. So if you have a lipstick that you like, that like I love my Milani ones. Um, I did get those in PR, but I've been using them for years. I love the Milani formula. I will spend on the Milani ones before I'll spend on the Charlotte Tilbury one because I really enjoy them. Why would I spend more just for the packaging and the name? You know what I'm saying? Because that's really what you're getting with Charlotte Tilbury is the packaging is very nice. Let me see if I can find one real quick. I'm pretty sure I have one near the top. Here's Milani. Hold on. I thought I had one near the top, but I don't see it because I don't have many. Oh, here it is. Yay. Okay. So, so this is the Milani ones that I love. And then this is a Charlotte Tilbury one. So you get this beautiful packaging. It's very pretty. And then here's the, the shape of it. I'll swatch that for you. So this is in the shade Pillow Talk. And then this is Milani. I'm not saying these are dupes or anything. This I just grabbed out of my drawer. This is the shade Pleasure by Milani. So Charlotte Tilbury at $25, Milani at 10 approximately. And they're they're just as creamy. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like they're they're both creamy, they both feel good, they both have a nice lasting power. It's like you're paying for the name and the and the pretty packaging is what it comes down to because you can get comfortable lipsticks for much much cheaper. Uh, as far as the eyeshadows, I don't really like the Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows that I've used so far. They tend to be more toppery shades, more a natural look, which I do like a natural look, but I'm not as big into the toppery shades, so I'm not as big of a fan of the eyeshadows that I've tried. I don't think I've tried any of her cheek products. Oh, interesting. Jess says, I feel they intended it to be exactly how it was executed. Interesting. Interesting. But like, I don't know. I don't know, man. I just think that it's it's like, it's so weak. It's It just doesn't feel thought out. And I'm worried. I'm concerned because I feel like we're going to see more of these copycats. And I was talking to John about this, um, you know, my husband, John, I was talking to him about this and about um, some other things. What else, what else was related to this, but basically about cheap copies. Um, oh, we were talking about in what's been makeup today, the road um, phone case and how people, different companies were taping different products to phone cases to be goofy. And I was talking about how in the nineties, um, you know, the, the early 1990s, late eighties, early nineties, the, hair bands were really big. You know, they, 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 that was like the popular music that I really loved was, you know, Poison and Skid Row and Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses. And they all had the big hair and the makeup and everything. But by the late mid to late nineties, it was a lot of copycat brands, um, bands. It was a lot of copycat bands. So people are probably gonna be mad at me, you know, for saying Slaughter and Trickster, but <laughs> maybe I'm wrong on Slaughter, but Trickster, I remember feeling specifically that they were just a copy of the formula of a hair band. Like somebody had almost manufactured that band of these really good looking guys with the big hair and the makeup. And, you know, the songs were just so canned and just not thought out and thoughtful. It just felt like a cheap copy. You know, when you've got songs like November Rain from Guns N' Roses or Every Rose Has Its Thorn from Poison, and then you get, you know, uh, what was it, the main song from Trickster? I can't remember. It just wasn't like, it felt cheap. And I feel like when you hit a boom in any industry, when you hit a boom, whether it's music, whether it's movies, whether it's makeup, no matter what it is, you, you get something that's really popular. Eventually it gets watered down to the point where it's just not good anymore. Like it's like a copy of a copy of a copy. And it's like, 
eh, like what what are we left with? And I feel like the heart of this Charlotte Tilbury ad felt like that. It felt like a watered down version of Elf's that it wasn't thought out. It wasn't well done. It it just wasn't a good ad campaign. And I, I'm surprised that Charlotte Tilbury, hearing the pitch, not only approved it, but participated in it. I think that's weird that she, because she's obviously a brilliant woman. She's obviously, you know, done so much in the makeup space. She's, you know, she's a makeup artist. She, she knows this stuff. I'm just, I'm surprised that she signed off on this and participated in it because I think that she, I think of her as, as knowing that this was probably not the best idea. <laughs> like why, why, why did this happen? I do not know. So that's basically the main thoughts that I had on this that I wanted to share. Uh, but let me see what you all are saying. All right. Jamie says, okay, I logged in to share this new theory. Ooh, tell me. Elf has made great dupes of Charlotte Tilbury products. Is that why Charlotte Tilbury copied the Elf ad idea and kept talking about makeup DNA? <gasps> Jamie. Hmm, maybe. But see, this is the thing, though. This is the thing. Actually, I think I have it. Where, oh, I have it over here. This is the thing. All right. They did it wrong. I think they did it wrong. I think you might be right, Jamie. I think you might be right. I love this theory so much. You can't take our makeup DNA. So basically, maybe they're making... Oh, because that would explain why Charlotte signed off on it because it was supposed to be like, you can't steal like our actual formulas, like ELF, you may be able to kind of copy our packaging or copy our ideas, but you can't take the quality we have here at Charlotte Tilbury. That's so interesting. So they copied their idea for the criminal thing. Jamie, I love this. Okay, so this is what I was thinking. So what it reminds me of is, do you remember when Makeup Revolution copied Too Faced. So Too Faced comes out with a chocolate bar palette, right? And then not too long after, Makeup Revolution came out with chocolate bar palettes, but they were a little bit different. They were the chocolate bar and they had these like big drips going down them, but they were obviously biting off of Too Faced, right? And then Too Faced came out with this, the chocolate gold one, which had the drips going down like Makeup Revolution, but they did it so much better. So they did it like it's probably got fingerprints, probably all dirty because this is old. This is really old. But they did it so much better than the way that Makeup Revolution did it, right? So I think in order to pull something off, like what Jamie's saying, you have to do it better. You can't do a crappy copy of it. You know what I'm saying? It just hits wrong. You have to do it better. And I don't think they could have done it better. Like, honestly, I don't think that Charlotte Tilbury could have done it better than Elf. Like, they Elf put in so much into that ad. And it just ends up making Charlotte Tilbury look, if Jamie's right, a little bit petty. You know, even though they probably have a good reason to feel a little irritated that Elf is knocking off their products and selling them for cheaper. But I don't feel like, you know what though? I don't feel like, it may, and I could be totally wrong here. Please correct me if I'm wrong, because I could totally be wrong. I don't feel like Elf is like straight up copy copying. You know what I'm saying? Like they're not taking like Model Co, right? Model Co out of Australia. They, their bottle of the Flawless Filter looks almost identical in packaging to the Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. When Elf did it, watch me have it. Watch me have it. Where is it? I put it away. I think I put it away because I cleaned up my area. It was sitting here forever and it's not there. I'll show you the one that's from Catrice. So Elf's looks similar to this. So the, the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter is the same format as this. It just got like the branding on there for Charlotte Tilbury. Elf's looks very similar. Catrice's looks very similar. So I don't think Elf is really, they're, they're taking the concept and they're making their own version of it, which is what brands do, but they're not copying like the logo design or like the packaging, like, like um, Make a Revolution did to Too Faced. So it's like, I don't feel like they should be like all that mad because when you have a trendy product, like the Milk Makeup Clear Jelly Blush thingies, guaranteed Elf's gonna come out with one, Make a Revolution's gonna come out with one, like you're gonna, Milani probably come out with one. Every, there are gonna be so many drugstore brands that come out with those clear milk makeup blush sticks, guaranteed, because they're cute. 
And that's what companies do is they get inspiration from each other and then they create their own thing and then they sell it at their own price point. Is it the same thing? Absolutely not, right? Thank you, Jamie, for bringing that next level. I appreciate you. That's so interesting. I'm gonna scroll down quite a bit because I've been talking for a total of four minutes. <laughs> um, okay, Susan, but this kind of did work. We're, we are talking about Charlotte Tilbury and people are asking about her brand, the quality, et cetera. That's a good point. See, this is why I love Lev Chat. Thank you, Susan. Excellent point. I will take that. Excellent point. <laughs> Tom Collins says, OMG, LOL, I don't wear makeup, but love the videos. And I keep seeing Charlotte Tilbury and thought it stood for Connecticut. <laughs> and it didn't make sense. And I just realized it stands for Charlotte Tilbury. That's so funny. All right. Uh, supposedly, there's a comment up here. Here we go. Listener, crappy copy of the advertisement like they are a crappy copy of their makeup, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's the thing is they were like, but it's, but shouldn't it be better though? If Charlotte Tilbury is better than Elf, shouldn't they create something better? I see what you're saying though. Totally see what you're saying. Interesting. Like maybe they're just playing off of the Elf's isn't as good, but I think that what the problem is, is that the Elf version supposedly is very similar. I um, don't own the Charlotte Tilbury version, so I can't compare. I felt like the Elf was a little too glowy for me. Like it was a little too much um, underneath makeup. I, I, I like it better as like a topper highlight. It's kind of like this one. I'll show you real quick, the Catrice one. They just sent me this in PR and I use it for the first time the other day, but I'll show you kind of how these products work. It just adds, just a little bit of subtle glow like that. So you can see it just it just adds a tie. If you're listening, it just added the tiniest bit of shine to my cheek just to just to have a little bit of light reflection instead of it just being just straight matte. So all these products pretty much work the same, but I feel like they're starting to get more like the Catrice one where they're a little more subtle. And I felt like the Elf one was a little loud for me, but it has been a minute since I've used it, too. So that might not be a fair assessment of it. But um, but unfortunately, we are out of time. It makes me so sad because I feel like we could talk about this for like another 15 minutes, but I want to make sure I respect the moderator's time. Um, yeah, exactly. Monica, but she chose the lipstick. She should have gone with the Halo Glow. I totally agree, but I guess they weren't releasing a new Halo Glow. I guess that's why she did it. Okay, gotcha. Ricky, thank you, Ricky. Ricky... I'm starting to fall in love with Ricky a little bit. Ricky says Elf definitely has a little more pigment than Charlotte Tilbury. Thank you for helping me with that. Because Ricky Ricky talked me off of a ledge um, on Twitter when I was freaking out over that dang um, the the postcards for the Lisa Frank video. I'm on Twitter like freaking out and Ricky's like, ah, you're going to be okay. Like, <laughs> Ricky was so nice to me on Twitter. <laughs> kind of talking me through it, kind of talking me down. So I appreciate you, Ricky. Thank you for being in live chat. But I, and thank you for saving me here. Um, since it sounds like you own both of them, Elf definitely has a little more pigment than the Charlotte Tilbury because I felt like it was a little more intense uh, than than what than what I personally prefer for a product like that. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and pop off here uh, this week. Uh, for content. I don't know what the Friday video is going to be, but it's going to have to be something easy because I need to take care of my physical health. I have not been taking care of my physical health for the past week. So I need to do something easy. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be something that is of low effort. I'm just letting you know ahead of time. <laughs> I mean, low effort to me means it's going to take me a day and a half. Um, but but still, it's going to be um, something that's not quite as in-depth. Uh, I need a recovery week. So if something's going to come out on Friday, I don't know what it is. Live chat next Sunday is going to be at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, let me look and see if there's anything coming up that you all need to know about as far as my schedule and things coming up. Uh, let's see. Daylight Savings Time is coming up on the 10th. So that'll be interesting. That's always interesting. We've got St. Patrick's Day on the 17th. That's a Sunday. And then we got Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. So Easter Sunday would be the next thing. So we are not going to have a live chat on the 31st because I'm sure I'll be uh, hanging out with my parents on the 31st. But I wouldn't I would imagine we'll still have a, uh, a what's up in makeup that week. They just we just won't have a live chat on Easter Sunday. So that's really the only thing that we um, that I kind of need to tell you about. And uh, the plan is to have all 10 a.m. live chats for the rest of February and March. Um, and we'll see in April whether that changes. So uh, have a wonderful week. Mad love to you. Thank you for being here. I hope you had as much fun in chat as I did. And I will see you in a video very, very soon. Oh, we'll see you tomorrow for the product report. Mad love. Bye.